Prior to this weekend, the Mets played in a way 156 meaningless games, as all those meant nothing when the team headed down to Atlanta Friday night for a three-game set that would likely determine who would win the NL East division. All the Mets needed to do was not get swept, and with Jacob deGrom, Max Scherzer, and Chris Bassett as the scheduled starters, it was very unlikely, or so fans thought. Twenty twenty two has been everything Mets fans can ask for from their team. Their ninety eight wins are their most since nineteen eighty eight. They threw a combined no hitter, and with the three game series coming up against Washington, they will likely surpass the hundred win total on the year. The team is one of the best in baseball. Their offense ranks sixth in runs scored, the rotation ranks eighth in the array, and the bullpen ranks top ten in the array and features the best closer in the game. None of that matters though anymore, especially when everything was set in place for them to succeed. During the second half, they had one of the lighter schedules in baseball, and from August 25th onward, the team had the easiest remaining schedule left. In the last week of August till the end of the season, the Mets had 12 series remaining, and only two of them were against 500 teams, the Dodgers and the Brewers. On top of that, in the month of September, the Mets had a 16-game stretch against the Nationals, Pirates, Marlins, Cubs, and Pirates again, and following a series against the Brewers had the Athletics and Marlins. They went 14-10 and overall against those teams, which is good, not great, as some of those teams are the worst in baseball. Where the Mets really messed up was going 6-8 and against Washington, Miami, Oakland, and Chicago, and that included a three-game sweep by the Cubs. Last season, the Mets held the NL East division lead for 103 days and ended up missing the playoffs and finishing 8 games under 500. That's as bad as a collapse gets, but this season was a little different. On June 1st, the Mets had a 10.5 game division lead over Atlanta, and even in early August, the team held a 7 game lead over the Braves. The Mets went 66-44 and after June 1st, which would put them at a 95 win pace for the entire season. Meanwhile, the Braves were on another level. They went 76-32 and after June 1st, which was the best mark in baseball, and put them at 114 win pace for the year. However you want to put it, whether it's by saying Atlanta was a better team from the start, the Mets still played good baseball during that time, or injuries hurt them, this was still a collapse, just a different type of one. The Mets will likely finish with 100 wins and become the 11th team in baseball history and only the 6th since 1969 to win 100 games and finish 2nd in their division. They've had a very successful season, a great one matter of fact, posting the 4th most wins in baseball, but the reality is they choked when it mattered the most and as a result put themselves in a bad position going forward. Playing in the wildcard round, compared to winning the NL East and getting a first round bye is a huge deal, and as of today, the Mets would host the second wildcard spot, which will likely be the Padres, who could be a difficult matchup. On top of that, if they were to win their first round series, both Jacob deGrom and Max Scherzer won't be available to start game 1 or 2 in the NLDS, and they lose home field advantage. There's still three games left to play, and anything can happen in baseball. The Braves travel to Miami, and the Mets host the Nationals, but it's very unlikely the Braves get swept, which is the only way for New York to clinch the NL East division. A wildly successful season has turned into a disappointing one. Winning 98 games means nothing, when the team chokes a 10.5 game lead for the division and got swept by their division rival to end the season. Now, there's only one way for the team to make it up to the fans, advance far into the playoffs, and be the last team standing.